So I just finished making my kind of rant on this topic, this dog bylaw, and it ended up being a half hour long, so I need to make a shorter version of this, and if anybody knows any free or cheap video editing software that I can use in the future, I'd really appreciate if you could, like, let me know what that might be in the comments or on a message or something like that. But anyway, let's get into talking about this P1000, I think, dog bylaw. It's the bylaw the East Hans Municipality wants to enact related to dogs. Let's get right into it. I want to start with what the penalties for infringing it are. Se Section 12, penalties. 12.1, a person who does anything prohibited by this bylaw or who neglects or fails to do anything in this bylaw. Basically, if you contradict this bylaw at all, they can charge you 500 bucks maximum and put you in jail for 10 days maximum. 12.2. Every owner of a dog that commits an offense under section 6 of this bylaw upon conviction shall be liable for a penalty of not more than $5,000 and in default of payment they can throw you in prison for a term that's not more than 30 days. And then there's the rest of 12.2 two down here which is basically if you give them a hard time while they're enacting this bylaw or performing their duties of this bylaw they can double the fine in the first part of 12.2 so that it's a hundred dollar minimum and not more than ten thousand dollars instead of five and not more than two months in jail instead of one so af after that let's go up to Section 6, which is the one that's referenced uh, right here in Section 12.2, the part about the $5,000 fine and month in jail. Responsibilities of the owner. This is basically the rules that, yeah, you get those uh, consequences for those transgressions here. So 6.1, every owner of a dog. One whose dog runs at large, now the definition of runs at large is in the definition list, I go more into that in the other video, I'll link the other video, the half hour long video, in the comments along with the link up here to the bylaw. So yeah, 6.1.2, whose dog is not wearing a tag required by this bylaw, so if your dog isn't registered and wearing its dog tag, you can be charged the 12.2 amount of a month in jail if you don't pay the fine or a fine up to $5,000. Three is a dog who's not licensed at all, so two is if your dog's not wearing its tag, three is if your dog's not registered, four is whose dog persistently disturbs the quiet of neighborhoods by barking, howling, or otherwise. Five is whose dog at any time without the presence of a mitigating factor, which it, they go into in the definitions, has attacked or injured any person or animal or damaged any property. 6.16. Who harbors, keeps, or has under their care direction a dog that is fierce or dangerous as defined in this bylaw. It, the fierce or dangerous definition is somewhat up to interpretation as well based on other definitions in this bylaw such as attack or threaten. I'll go into them a little bit more later. 6.17 who fails to remove if you don't pick up your dog shit they'll they can charge you that fine unless your dog is a service animal. 6.8 whose dog damages public or private property. 6.9, who sells or transfers a registered dog and does not report the sale or transfer to the dog enforcement officer or municipal staff, along with the name and address of the person whom the dog was sold or transferred to, a description of the dog, and the registration number of the dog is guilty of an offense under this bylaw. And then 6.2, the other part of the rules. When requests to do so, the owner shall deliver to the municipal staff a statement in writing of the number of dogs owned or harbored or habitually kept on the premises of the owner, 
and in the event the owner neglects or refuses to provide the statement within a period of 10 business days after having received notice requiring the statement to be provided shall be guilty of the six, Section 6 penalties 12.2 under this bylaw. So let's go down to Section 10 because I wanted to cover that too before I get into the other stuff that I quickly just want to kind of glance over and if you want to go into more detail you can watch the half hour long video that I'll link in the comments but section 10 of this bylaw is destruction of a dog 10.1 where the owner of a dog which is fierce or dangerous according to the definition set out in this bylaw or which is rabid which has no definition in this bylaw or appears to be rabid which is up to interpretation or exhibiting symptoms of canine madness, which is defined in the bylaw, you can find that one. Or, this is the part that kind of confuses me a little bit, and I would like some clarification on it from somebody if they know. Or has euthanized or caused to be euthanized said dog shall provide to the municipality or the bylaw enforcement officer upon request evidence of the euthanization. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is saying that the municipality can order a dog to be euthanized and then demand evidence of the euthanization or if it's just required whenever it happens. If, I'm not sure what exactly that's covering. 10.2 Municipal staff may after two written warnings have been given to the owner that a dog has been running at large or eluding capture kill such a dog on site or after capture. Municipal staff may destroy on site any dog that is running at large and which the bylaw enforcement officer believes or has reasonable or probable grounds to pose a danger to a person or domestic animal or to property or person other than the owner. So that's basically saying and I don't think that municipal staff, I'll say this again, I said it in the last video, I don't think they're trying to push this bylaw to the letter and kill everybody's dog that they can. I do just think that they're trying to cover all their bases in case there is a situation where the person they hire feels that that's what they have to do. But just how open to interpretation and vague some of the terminology and some of these things are in this bylaw and just how sensitive a topic it is for people who have dogs. Uh, I think it could be handled a lot better. Let's keep going. Uh, let's go up to the definitions because that is really where the most of this is kind of... It's where a lot of the problems lie because like look at the definition of animal here. It means an animal owned under the care and control of a person. Under this bylaw, wild animals aren't even considered animals. It's not a big deal. It just goes to show that how weird and kind of subjective this bylaw is. Attack means to injure, scratch, bite, or threaten, which is defined later, to give the impression of threatening or an assault resulting in real or perceived injury to another person or animal. Now, I think we should have something, maybe not municipally, because I'm pretty sure there are things under the Animal Protection Act which cover this type of thing, and if not, there are civil remedies for it, but there should be something for if somebody is bitten or attacked by a vicious dog. But the way attack is written here, like an overly energetic and happy dog that happens to turn around and maybe have his mouth open and maybe cause like a minor scrape that doesn't break the skin inadvertently unintentionally of the dog might qualify as an attack by the letter of this bylaw i just want to keep going i don't want to define all these things i go into a little more detail in the other video and you can look it up for yourself like, I have a lot of them on the screen here. You've probably been reading them already. But, uh... Mitigating factor is 
here, it's what, uh, it, it kind of goes in conjunction with the definition for fierce or dangerous dog. And if your dog behaves in a way that would normally qualify it as a fierce or dangerous dog, which has consequences in other parts of this bylaw, but these mitigating factors were applying to it at the time, then it's not considered a dangerous dog based on that situation. And the, the mitigating factors, you can read them here, they're right there, but they're basically, don't be a dick to the dog. Noise means an unwanted sound or activity that unreasonably disturbs the quiet, peace, rest, enjoyment, comfort, convenience of a neighborhood in, of the municipality or part thereof, which is kind of vague. I, like, well, not not so much vague. I shouldn't say it like that. It's, it, it just, I go into more detail later, but it's because the bylaw section six applies to noise and the $5,000 to $10,000 fine for this seems excessive to me and yeah uh, one more definition that I want to go over thanks for your time and paying attention this far but threatens means unmuzzled unleashed or leashed either one or unattended by its owner or a member of the owner's family in a vicious or terrorizing manner approaches in an apparent attitude of attack upon the streets, sidewalks, any public grounds or places, or on private property other than the property of the owner to any person or animal. In and of itself, the only problem I see with this definition of threaten is that the only way that you can be sure that somebody can't interpret your dog as being threatened or threatening is if it has a muzzle on at all times. But the problem really that I see with threatens is that they use this definition for threaten in the definition for attack right here, which seems to leave way too much subjective power up to both perhaps the municipal staff in charge of the act, I should say, and also anybody who decides to complain about some neighbor's dog that's a very minor nuisance to them. So yeah, I, I don't want to go too much farther into this, but uh, there are a lot of really small wordy issues that I have with the bylaw that I go into in the other one that you can go watch if you want to. Thanks for watching. And yeah, I'm not sure where we should go from here. If you also have issues with the way this bylaw is worded, I'd suggest we as dog owners in the municipality speak to each other, make sure everybody has an idea that this is what either just recently passed or is poised to pass and let our counselors know that, hey, this isn't the way we want to see dogs and other pet policy handled in the municipality. So yeah, once again, thanks for your time. Have a good rest of your day. And the more in detail video and also a link to this bylaw will be in the description if you want it.